Hello everybody and welcome to Against the Fence. In this video, we're going to be recapping our 2022 champion predictions, which we made back in January. All right. Seems like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Yeah, it does actually. It does Whoa. seem, and a lot's gone on in the UFC since that period, but it's about the mid year. Do you point. have a favorite card since? A favorite card? The one that stands favorite out card. most of all? Um, yeah, the London ones, because we might be biased with the London ones. So I think, I think uh, UFC 274, Oliver versus Gaethje, I think was probably uh, one, of your one of my faves. Well up there. Barn well better. Barn burner. The whole idea of this show, I guess, is to get into the whole breakdown, our predictions, sorry, that yeah, we had set out from the very beginning. It's, of it's year. basically talk about them. We're going to be sort of discussing. Who's going to be right leading up towards the end of the year and who's just absolutely at a stinker and yeah. it's just it's not There's, happening. Do you know what? I've watched back our last one, um, bits of it anyway, and, and there's a funny point, some funny points about France and Ghana, how we laughed at Ash for picking yeah, up guy. we did. Uh, and then, of course, there's ones about the front, um, our Jermaine Sterling as well. Yeah, um, there's that one as well. And, and that sort of crazy chaotic twist. But yep, some bold calls at flyweight as I well. Know, I know, I um, know. I think we should probably get into it. Shall we? All right. On the left, we've got the current rankings. Uh, that was the rankings from January. Okay, so on Back the left, we've got the, the rankings from January. On the right, we've got the rankings now. And look, there's there's not been much movement, of course. We've had um, Jessica Andrade, who's kind of moved out and went up a division. Yeah. Uh, but she's going to be coming back down. Carla Esparza now headline, heading the division up as a champ. So yes. So she went from second to, to, to champ. Um, Which was very, not not expecting at all. I think we all probably thought that Rose was going to was gonna take the win in that one. We did. We've got no movers uh, with Angela Hill. She stayed no. exactly the same. Uh, maybe shuffled a little bit, but it's all in all there. Um, Amanda Rivas. Michelle has, Watson's come down quite a bit. Yeah, there's not been a lot of... Shakers here. I mean, Torres stays exactly the same. Nina Nunes has... Oh, she, she put her gloves up, didn't she? She yeah, put her she gloves retired, up. so that's why yeah, she's out. Yeah, completely retired. And that's just made room for uh, Jessica Penne to... Um, well, she was on the scene initially as yeah, well, but just, uh, just more people to, to creep on. Uh, but yeah, she's gone down. Other than that, look, it's not a lot. It's not. I mean, we'll no. see some wild things happen in other divisions. Not so much here with the women's straw no. weight. Shall we have a look at what our predictions were? When yeah, we, uh, what were the predictions? So when this happened... We had said, well, I had said Rose Namunina was going to be the title holder at the end of yep. the year. That's what I said. Yep. You guys went with Marina. To yeah, I think at the time we were probably hoping that maybe Jessica Andrade would get the rematch with Rose. But it was Carla Esparza, which was quite surprising, come out of nowhere, really. Ash isn't with us, unfortunately, but I'll speak for him um, because I think he probably picked Marina Rodriguez to be champion by the end of the year. Uh, same reason that I did. Go is on. I felt that Rose was going to be um, the, her next opponent in line. I knew that Marina Rodriguez was creeping up there. Um, as you can see, you know, like now she's number three. She mm -hmm. should be getting a title fight. Um, and I felt that, you know, Rose was going to was gonna lose to, I think, the talented striker. That is Marina Rodriguez. And that's the reason why I think both of us have gone for Marina towards the end of the year. But, you know, in that th I think in that time, Marina has kind of... She had one fight um, with Yan Jinan. Close fight. It was a split decision. Both girls are very talented strikers. Um, but yeah, it wasn't like in a performance to blow your hair back. I think if she would have got the finish in that fight, then maybe she would have um, had a case to fight uh, Rose for the belt. But look, I think with Cara Esparza taking the, the, the mantle now, I, I think it, 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 it blows... Marina out there. I don't think she's going to get a title shot at all. And, you know, there's rumors about her fighting Weili Zhang. So, you know, that fight, I think, has been booked now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, what the, was that? The annoying, the annoying uh, thing is, Rose beats Carla Esparza nine times out of ten, in my opinion. Well, I'd say about seven, six, seven times out of ten. Yeah. And it just didn't happen on that night. Um, but she's now lost overall twice. So there's no argument to run it back a third no, time. No, there isn't. So she's kind of so that's a bit annoying too. for a bit. It's yeah. really annoying. Interesting. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah, uh, let's go to the next one. Women's flyweight division. Not the steepest of divisions. It's c completely being ruled by Valentina Shevchenko, of course, at the moment. Um, as for the rankings-wise, you've got jo Joanne Wood, who's kind of taken a big step down. You've yeah. had Manon Faro, who's come up through the ranks. Mikel Vio's dropped quite a bit. I think that's one of the biggest uh, rises we can see there. That's seven spaces, Mar Mar yeah. Manon Yeah, and Jessica Andrade, of course, coming in there is, yeah. is a big one. You yeah, know. a lot more activity happening here, for sure. But yeah, some of the big notable ones. Faro doing nicely there. And Molly McCann's on the scene. That's exciting to see. She is on yeah. the scene. Yeah, she's had a great year so far. Yeah. Um, you know, you could probably argue of one of the, maybe one of the MVPs for this year, sorry. Yeah. Um, she could be in there as a top five. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, Easy. really exciting to see her last performances, those elbows. Yeah. All day long. Finishes, man. All getting getting day long. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I think out of looking at the, you know, that she definitely brings really exciting fights. And that's one thing that the fans really want to see mm. and certainly want to see more of. So look, undoubtedly, love to see her start again, match up against the top 15, the fighters now. Who do you think is going to be? Would, I mean, I, I do want to just touch on a bit on, on Molly McCann. Who do you think would be um, a suitable or a, a stylistically a fun matchup? Well, she's fighting Erin Blanchfield next. Yeah. Um, at UFC 281. I think that's going to be in New York. I don't know. And I think it's going to be a tricky but... fight for, for Molly because Erin likes to wrestle. She's mm-hmm. very strong. She's very young as well. Quite athletic. So, you know, it's, it's going to be it's going to be whether or not Erin can withstand the pressure that Molly brings. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Fight. But uh, I think we should probably talk about the fact that Talia Santos obviously um, challenged Shevchenko for the belt. She I did. said in the predictions that she was going to cause her problems and that fight was going to get booked. Yeah. But I still said that Shevchenko was going to come out on top. And yes, she did. Only just, you know, nothing's booked yet for Shevchenko going forward. But uh, who did we actually pick? Shall we have a look? I think we all sided with all started the queen with herself. The bullet. The bullet. Yeah, um, why not? And why wouldn't we? You know, and she, we think she's still going to be top of the division yeah. come the end of the year. And so far, as it seems, we're on track for that. Yeah, I did say that two, perhaps um, Misha Tate would cause her problems, that Misha Tate might be somebody who, who challenges Valentina towards the back end of the year. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen because she lost against Lauren Murphy. Mm. So, you know, Valentina's stuck for contenders at the moment. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I can't see there's much else for her. Talia Santos was really her biggest and, and, and her best opportunity. Yeah. I, and it still shows how many levels above the division she yeah, is. Yeah, I don't think Talia's going to get a rematch, though. No. It was a close fight. But um, if Vivian Arujo can maybe get past Alexa Grosso, I guess you could say that Vivian Arujo would be next in line. But it would be mm. a tricky sell. It would be a very tricky sell. To be honest, I would think Talia should be in at number one and Caitlin Jukajian should be at number two, in yeah. my opinion. But if Manon Farrow was to beat Caitlin Jukasian in two, uh, UFC 280, then Manon Farrow, I think, will be next in line to fight Shevchenko, but I think it'll be next year. Yeah, yeah. In which case, we could be solid, a safe sailing on that prediction. Let's go into number three. Yeah. Women's bantamweight division. It's, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. This has. Yeah. Um, we've, we've, we've had seen, a shock. We've seen it change hands. We've seen them her steal it back. We're talking about, of course, the lioness herself. I think it was the biggest. What was the, the stats? We it, saw was, it was it like was a, the crazy score. The, the biggest margin yeah. of, for a championship fight. Huge win. Yeah. Ever. Uh, one of the top three. It was insane. We've got Holly Holm slipped down, of course, because she lost against Ketlin Vera. Raquel Pennington is, for some reason, moved up, even though she's been pretty inactive. There's a lot of fights um, we had here, to be Yeah, there, there is, still is. And I think there was at the time of, of, of this, re- when, when we did this last video. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got Arena Aldana, who's yet to make an appearance this year. She's going to be fighting Macy Chasson at UFC 279. So that's the next pay-per-view coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, Aspen Ladd's going to be fighting Sarah McMahon. Still a lot to Any exciting movement. fights in this division that you really want to see? I literally can't really see much. I mean, I want to see Irene, Irene Aldana get the win, I think, against Macy Chasson. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she's been out for quite some time, to be honest. Yeah, she hasn't fought since UFC 264, um, which was last year. Something so, like you know, that. maybe she can come back better than Ava and maybe make another title or a title run of some yeah. kind. Um, Ketlin Vera has probably been the standout, but, you know, she's not looked She's not on a two-win streak. She's not on a two-win yeah. I mean, someone like Raquel Pennington's on a four-win streak at the moment. Yeah, so good, slow and yeah. steady. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I will see how that one pans out. Aspen Lads. Is this her comfortable division, Aspen Lad? Or is yes, this, this is it her, is. Because she well, did go up. Um, yeah, she did go up to Featherweight and fight last minute yeah. um, against Norma Dumont, but... Uh, I think Bantamweight is kind of where it is. Really. All right, let's see who we got then. Who did we pick? Oof. There you go. I mean, well, it's pretty, it was pretty obvious. I just can't see anyone touching her now. I mean, nah. the Juliana Pena loss was a big, big shock and big surprise, of course. But look, I, th- I think she's she's, she's on her own game. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was more so, uh, you know, Amanda Nunes being off her game. Not to take anything from mm. Juliana Pena. So then Julia Pena being outstanding and sensational well, let's, get let's move on to men's flyweight then that's, that's next up some right. changes of course yeah. we have Brandon an interim. Moreno we, we have, have interim. an interim title holder as well Brandon Moreno was of course the champion at the time he lost to Davidson Figueredo back at uh, UFC 270 yeah I mean a few few changes in the division of course um, Pantoja has gone above Askar Askarov Askar yes. Askarov has slipped down yeah um, David Dvorak hasn't fought that much else. same round Kai Kai France has probably been the most impressive in the division honestly this division has stayed pretty stale Stag- stagnant hasn't it 
Yeah. He's not moved a lot. Mateus Nicolau has looked good, but he, I don't think he's fought that much. I'll tell you what, Matt Schnell's last fight deserved him to rise up um, at, at least another four or five spaces. That's, that fight yeah. was insane. Whilst we haven't seen much happening in this division, uh, you know, in terms of changing hands uh, position-wise, we've seen the fights we have seen, I think, have probably been some of the yeah, most electric. They've been, they've been, yeah. Some of the most electric oh, this year. Down. Honestly, the Kai Kara France, though, when he was out, um, and uh, he had that fight against Askar Askarov, that was that was insane. He, that mm. was super challenging. That was, yeah. that was a tough challenge for you him. You also had uh, Alejandro Pantoja getting mm. the win against Alex Perez. You know, quick work against Perez. I think that was a very impressive performance, and he moves to three uh, wins on the bounce now. Let's, let's see what we picked. Oh, yep. Let's have a look. Oof, no, you went Brandon Moreno, myself and Ash went Askar Askarov. So it actually looks more likely for me to be in the running on this one than anyone else. Potentially. Uh, but it's still not there. I mean, I've got an interim at this point in time, yeah. midway through the year. Brandon Moreno would have been, a, I, I don't, I can't see the rematch, the fourth fight happening towards it. It could do. It could do, to be honest. It depends on where Davison Figueroa is at in terms of healing. I think he's fine now. I think his hand, he, I yeah. think he broke his hand uh, in the Moreno fight. So surely they're going to run it back for a fourth time towards yeah. the end of the year. So you could be in the running for this. Whereas I think myself and Ash, we're completely out because we was expecting Askar Askarov to make an absolute charge and be next in line. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately he fell short against Kai Kai France, you know, yeah. and Kai Kai France really looked impressive. He looks and so good. You know, he's had a really good year, despite losing to Brandon Moreno, of course, last time out, which was was unfortunate. But, you know, I think Ask if Askar Askarov would have beaten Kai Kai France, then look, you know, he would have been in there against Moreno, effectively. Hands and down. Could have caused M Moreno a lot of problems. But either way, I think it's going to be an exciting fourth bout. And I, I just think these guys deserve a little bit more respect today. Yeah. They? They do. They've always been put as a co-main. They haven't been given the main. And I guess the tickets and the names, it's not anyone's decision, but no. the numbers that are there to back yeah. it up. And unfortunately, it's just not, it's just not strong enough. Mm -hmm. Although I would love to, I, I do want to see these guys go again for the fourth time because if it was ever going to happen to anyone in the UFC, it has to be these two. Just uh, the, the most insane rivalry going on. Um, and, and it's just awesome to see. But uh, let's move on then to the next division. Mm -hmm. We've got the Bantamweight division. Um, not as really changed in this because, I mean, we had the fight Peter Yarn versus Aljamain Sterling. Shock horror, Aljo actually got the win in that fight. Um, shocked you. Yeah, I mean, she sh <laughs> shocked us. But um, other than, the, in terms of movements, we've had yeah. a recent movement in Morab Dushvili moving up to number three now after beating Jose Aldo this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, uh, Marlon Vera, probably one of the potential MVPs for the year as well. Yeah, moved up from eighth to, to, to fifth now. His um, most recent uh, adversary being Dominic Cruz, which was just a, how to sort of uh, map that 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 challenge in movement. So impressive. Yeah, so I mean, impressive. you know, and before that, he beat Rob Font in mm -hmm. April. So. Showing how he can do it with the hands. Yeah, he's 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 been he's been active, man, and hopefully, maybe we could see him for a third time later on this year. Yeah, yeah, no, no he's got some very uh, aggressive. Uh, agenda this Marlon Vera and the way he's just been rising up the ranks has just been so impressive to see as well he's gone from eight now and he's sitting in at five yes. so who what other big risers have we seen here so Sean O'Malley where is he he wasn't on the scene but now he is no he was before okay so he's at 12 he's at 13 now this division is so stacked people yeah. have been moving in and out a lot or a lot you know Sean O'Malley was 12 pre, pre, prior um, he, he's coming off of a win but uh, Umar Namagomedov of course has made a, a, a rise He's now in the top 15. Jack Shaw's hanging around in top 15 as well. Um, yeah, a lot of movements towards the bottom half. I think lots to say about Mirab Divisvili, though. Stepping into top three right there in his last win um, against Jose Aldo. Just Eight in a row statements. now. That's, Eight in a row. Mate, the guy's, the guy's insane. That's exciting. It's yeah, really but, exciting. But who did we pick, though? Shall I have a look? Back in January. Ooh, oh, there you go. So... so so I remember this very quite clearly, right? So back in January, I specific I remember switching on this one. So you guys yes, were like, you "Oh, did. you switched last minute." I was like, "I know I did, but if I didn't, I would have gone with Aljamain Sterling." And I said, "Yes, I know I changed last minute, but the reason why I was thinking it was because I said I think Aljamain Sterling has had time to prep and he's going to beat Jan. I don't yeah. know why I didn't pick him on the night, but I said he was going to yeah. beat Jan. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> on the night, I didn't go with him. Wishy-washy. In January, I was like, he's going to beat Jan. I had so much reason for it. And then I thought, okay, well, he's not going to be able to do is just to deal with TJ. And the issue would be just sort of when and how that's going to be mapped, uh, mm. going to size up. But I feel like he's got a whole game plan put together for Jan 
and preparation. He's yeah, he's just got more reasons to win it. Yeah. So yeah, I, whilst I called that almost down to the T, let's see if the rest of the prediction does unfold. And TJ Dillashaw does manage to to, to get get bout against him. So they're due to fight yeah, at UFC two eighty. So literally, and that is in the month of. October. October. So yeah, I think basically so if he wins that, then that's the pick done. Possible. I'm frozen out of the game. That's fair to say. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I can't see how any way in which I could come back into it. I think Ash has gone for TJ Dillashaw because he kind of likes TJ. He loves watching yeah. TJ. So um, yeah, and I think at that point back in January, it was pretty obvious that TJ was going to heal up in time and challenge for the belt. Yeah. So yeah. check out who's coming up next. Yes, up next we've got. The featherweight division, of course, as Max Holloway still in at number one, holding it down. Josh Emmett has, of course, looked great. He beat Calvin Cater yeah. to move up there. He's on um, a five-fight ring streak, Chenson, Josh. Yes, he five. is. Insane. Oh, um, Chenson Jung's obviously dropped down quite a bit after losing to the champ. Arnold Allen destroyed Dan Hooker, what, yeah. who's not ranked in this division, but he looked amazing still. Um, he's gone up one spot. Yeah. Bryce Mitchell has made a surge as well. He's looked great. Um, Edson Barbosa has slipped down, unfortunately. Ilya Tapura is now into the rankings. He's a fun guy to watch. Yeah. He's a banger for sure. Yeah, still still a few movements to be made. It's going to be exciting to see. Yeah, see what Ilya Tapura can do. But guy's on a 12-fight win streak, so he's certainly showing some exciting promise stepping into the top 15, especially off his pre previous win against uh, Edson Barbosa. But prior to that as well, Jai Herbert, that, that, that knockout was just so clean. Yeah. Now, in the time that we made these predictions, of course, the champion Alexander Volkanovsky has had two fights, one against Chen Sun Jung, which obviously was a kind of a... Active. Last... Well, not last-minute re replacement. It was... Probably a month's notice, two months' notice, something like that, because he was scheduled to fight Max Holloway. Then, of course, he dominated Chen Sun Jung, then got the final third fight with Max Holloway back in July. So who did we pick for this one? If I remember correctly, yeah, I would have just been with Max Holloway. Oh, Lone Ranger with I'm Max. I'm locked out. Mate, that's I'm it. Out. You're frozen. Frozen out. i got no picks gone. It's not happening. It's not happening. Yeah. Myself. Max, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, look. Myself and Ash have comfortably gone for Volkanovski. He's now the number one pound for pound. Yes. Um, but I, I think it's. I don't think he's going to defend at the end of this year. I don't think he will. I think he's going to be a stand-in for the lightweight belt, and that's probably it. Look at the the schedule as well. Who's he fighting next? We've got a few pay-per-views left, so we've got not well, actually, not that many. Uh, two eight one is fully booked. We got December card two eight two. Um, that's probably going to be Glover versus Yuri. Most likely. Um, yeah. He could end up being on that one, maybe. Um, so, and then that's the last pay-per-view of the year. So Chances are you, you guys have got it picked correctly. Alexander yeah. Volkanovski to have it. Most likely. Looking likely. But yeah, I'm frozen out with Max. That ain't happening. No. All right, the lightweight division. Another completely stacked division. Um, a lot of movements, of course, because... The Charles Oliveira got stripped and was unable to fight for the belt against Justin Gaethje. Yes. Um, he won that fight to declare himself the number one contender, which is why he's in at number one. We've got a vacant belt at the moment. Um, Due to reasons that we don't quite like talking about, but we guess yeah. going to shine a light on it, right? 0.5? 0 0.5 yeah. overweight? And he strips him of his belt because of that. No way has that ever happened in history in UFC. Yeah. And there's been many a times when it's just been, all right, we'll allow it. And just sort of like, yeah. You know. There's not been that many movements in the division. As you can see, we've had Benil Darius slip down due to inactivity. And of course, yeah. making room for Charles Oliveira at the top, who's obviously the number one contender. He's got to be ranked if the, the, the belt's been stripped from him. Um, other than that, you, you've got movements such as Rafael uh, Desanos had an excellent performance against... Um, Rafael De Sanos, who's kind of slipped down to eight. Uh, you've got Mateus Gamrot, who's made a surge. He's you know had an excellent win against um, Armin Sarukian. Mm. Um, other than that, mm, Tony don't, Ferguson slipped down to eleven as well. He's out of the top ten now. But look, don't don't count out Benil Dariush. I know he's down at six now, and he's no longer in at three. But the guy's still a killer. He's an absolute dog. He's of just course. been in, in just just you know. Gotta, yeah, gotta I think fun. from last year when he last fought, he had a new child and he spent some time with family and that he kind was of injured, thing. Yeah. Injuries can came and he was supposed to fight. Is uh, Makachev? Of course, he could very much have been up there in in running for 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 for, for, for potential in a belt by now if he just yeah. if he if he was a bit more active. At the bottom, you've had Brad Riddell and 
uh, Diego Ferreira slip out to make mm. way for Jalen Turner yep. and Isma Gulov. Both of those guys are absolute killers as well for this division. And Conor McGregor, yes, I said his name. Yes, he is still there down. somehow. <laughs> still slipping down. <laughs> slipping down slowly, but he's still there. He's yeah. still there. Shall we see what we yeah, did? Who did we go wise? for? All right, let's have a look. Dun, dun, dun. Islam Makhachi. Across the board. Yeah, we all did. I mean, we see some promise in this guy. He's exciting. And what's really tough for me as well, because it's like, I, in my top five to watch, I was like, Benil Dariuj and Islam Makhachi. And at, the, at this point in time, they're both head to head fighting each other. So it was really Yeah, I mean, a lot of pick. people probably disagree with us. You know, there's a lot of Charles Oliveira fans now yep. coming through. Look, I'm going to stick with Islam Makachev. I said at the end of, no, at the start of last year, I said that this year will be the year for Islam Makachev. I'm sticking with that yep. through and through. And I've got to say, you know, I, I think the, the time is now and we'll, we'll yeah. see. If I could change my pick, this is the one I'll probably change it on. Just because I think Charles Oliveira, oh, I just seen how he fucking, is. I could do. I you could wish do. washy man, I could like, do. constantly I could changing. Do. On, on one of them, if I, was, I mean, I think in some of them, by the end, like, like for example, like, yeah, I can't change like, like Max Holloway, Alexander. I can't change that one. It's clear. But this one is still 50 50, I think. And it's, and you know, as confident you are with Isla Mekachev, I actually quite like the odds of, uh, of, of, of Charles Oliveira uh, come the end of the year. Um, I, I think I think he's got some some problems and he could mm. get it done. I think we'll see come it. October. No, we'll see yeah. come October. Yeah. What's next? Either way, it'll be exciting. We've got the welterweight division. Yes. Oof, man, mm. who would have seen that change of hands? As Leon Edwards is now the champion, of course, Kamara Usman now down at number one. Um, Colby Coventon down at For two. The first time in a while, down. shifting down from number one. He's, he's cozy up there, wasn't he? he yeah. Was cozy Coventon yep. sitting in that number one spot for such a long time of inactivity. Whilst we were making this video, of course, we said that at the time that there was a rumor uh, about Hamzat Shemaev taking on Gilbert Burns. That fight happened. Yes. And what an insane war that was. Probably one of the fights of the year. So good. And look, Shemaev got the win and moved up to number three. One of the Biggest jumps we have seen so yes. far on these uh, on on the, across these divisions today. Now he hasn't he's moved. Also got another one matched up though. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. is up against. Yeah, he's going to be against Nate Diaz, Nate who's Diaz. not but um, ranked unfortunately, so no movements there. No. Nope. But one person who has looked impressive. I mean, look, a lot of people have been chalking him up a little bit. Is Bilal Mohamed, who hasn't moved in the rankings, but he's taking out the likes of Vicente Luque. Um, I think Stephen Wonderboy Thompson was early on this year as well. It's been a um, steep fall for Vicente. Yes, it has, you know, especially losing to, to Jeff Neal in his last outing as well. He's not had a good year. And no. he was kind of someone we, we were, we, we said during the, during the, the last show, yeah. we said that we, he, he could potentially get a title shot at yeah. some point in the year, but you know, it's just not materialized. It's yeah. just not been He's been looking away so from him, great. Unfortunately. Um, yeah, Bilal Mohamed. Uh, yeah, it was just the two fights that he's had this year. Oh, no, just the one, sorry. Oh, I thought he had two. Just the Vicente Luque, Luque fight for him. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, a lot of people have fallen down to make way for other people. Um, yeah, Jeff Neal, obviously fight. a big jump, of course, as well, with that yeah. win against Vicente Luque. He looks so good. He really did. Uh, Rachmanov, of course, made us, is, is now in the rankings at 11. He's made some waves. 16 fight win streak. This guy is someone to keep an eye on. I'll tell you that for free. Yeah, two fights this year. One in February, one in June. Yep. Beating Carlson Harris and Neil Magny. Neil Magny was his ticket up that rankings into that number one, 11 spot. He's never seen a decision. He only finishes no. things. Submission exactly. or by knockout. Yeah, potentially one to watch for, for next year, of course, to make a, a run for the belt, maybe. Mm, yeah, maybe. Shall we see what, uh, what we said? Yes, who did we say? Prediction-wise. Drum roll that. Bosh. We did we say Kamaru Kamar Kamar Usman. The guy was looking good, better and better, you know, fight after fight. And here we, although it's still possible. It, it? may be. I see the third fight, will it happen or not towards India? I can't see it. Personally, I can't see it. It, I mean, think, it will happen, but this yeah. year is a question, right? Yeah. yeah I, it'll happen, I think, the start of next year. There's already talks about coming to, to London. Dana, you know, people keep asking Dana in press conferences now. Dana said in the last press conference of the Contender Series that they are they have started looking at it, like uh, arenas, stadiums, and stuff in the UK. So hopefully Leon Edwards will be defending on UK soil. But look, I can't see it being at the end of this year. No, but yeah, it's it's still going to be quite exciting to see that one come back again. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, if I remember watching the watch long, watching you, <laughs> watching the watch long, but watching you guys watch this, <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't in the in the country. However, it was just. You know, first round went to Leon Edwards, of course, but then second, third, fourth, yeah. it, it really swung Kamari's way until yeah. that kick came in fifth. And, you know, if that was to run back, 
Um, it, how many times out of 10 does Kamaru Usman win? Yeah. Yeah, so true. if it comes back, I, I do like my chances of, uh, of getting my prediction right should that fight come in before the end of the year. Um, but yeah, we should uh, we shall see. We're going to leave up to UFC prices for that one. If you like the fact that we've got egg on our faces for picking Kamar Roosman, smash a like on the video because we're pretty much frozen out of this one. Yep, until we know more. Let's have a look at next. Next, which one? Nine. Nine. All right. The middleweight division. Um, you got Jared Cannon Robert here. Whittaker, who's, you know, yep. Gone up to two. Two. Um, Vittori gone down to three. Bruns, really, the top four is still the same. Yeah. It, the, the only impressive addition to the top five, Alex Pereira. Of course. Of Alex course. Pereira. Now, you would have seen that. I would, didn't see this coming at all. Didn't see it coming this I fast. Thought, I know. Not and I've said time fast. and time again, I thought that Alex Pereira was going to be moved up slowly but surely. Mm. The UFC gave him the perfect matchup in Sean Strickland, and yep. that was his ticket to the top five. Absolutely. And there he is, knocking on the door, and will be fighting next, the yes. champ himself, which UFC is just... 281 in November, such Madison an exciting Square story. Garden. Cannot wait for that one. Couldn't have imagined it happening so quickly. Shall we look at what our predictions were for this one? Yes. We said we would have liked to see... Is it Adesanya? Oh, so oh you and me. Went well. Adesanya. Ash, Ash went, went for, for Robert, Robert Whitaker. Whitaker. Now, what's interesting about this one, and I remember it very well, we said that we thought that Robert Whitaker would beat Izzy back in whatever month it was. Was it February... Um, March? No. March. Oh, when was it? When was it? When there was we go. It? I just sent Whitaker February. It February, was February. Back in February. Yeah. It was February. So I was right. Um, we thought that Whitaker would win that fight and then they would rematch towards the end of the year, which is why we stuck with Israel Adesanya and uh, Israel would win the trilogy fight. But Ash, on the other hand, stuck with Robert Whitaker. Of course. Yeah. That was so, it. I, mean, I do remember that quite it well. It was a safety yeah. pick as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it. it was like, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll get it back. And Ash was quite deflated. He was like, oh, I didn't really think of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I was just so excited because I remember sitting there and you explained the reason why. I was like, I have the exact same <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, great thinking. Great minds to be glad. But yeah, otherwise, it's, um, it, it's now actually, th- th- what's, what's, what is a surprise is that a new addition to the equation that we didn't know exactly Alex Pereira comes straight out of nowhere literally chucked a curveball in there and wow what happens we, we got to stick with the pick yeah. I mean personally I know you're going to still want to go for Israel Asana. I do personally I want Alex Pereira to win mm. so if he does win I'm not mad that, that, that I'd lose this pick to be honest you you want him to win I wouldn't I wouldn't be I want Traitor. Pereira to win mate I, I want Pereira to win nah. I mean, you got to man is the he? guy's entertaining is he is he is he is he all right, shall we look at number 10? Yeah, it's my number Although 10. I would love to talk about Izzy all day. I know. Well, we've got to move on. <laughs> Light heavyweight division. Yeah. Oh, we had an exciting champ this year. Yes. Clover Tichir himself stepping into pole yes. position. Yes. Made his first title defense um, against Yuri Prohaska. I always make some of my years, though. Was that last year? Was that this year? That was this year. That was, was the only year. fight that it, it has happened, title mm. fight in this division. Um, in terms of movements, Magomed Ankalaev keeps impressing. He's still a tough puzzle to solve. He's moving into number three. Um, Anthony Smith has dropped down. Uh, you've got Jamal Hill, another surprising yeah, one. That's he's made exciting. waves. From 12 up to six. Look, he's been insane. He could Mate, be potentially he's one of things. the MVPs of the year. Mate. Because of just the amount of wins he's had. You know, the, the Johnny Walker and win was impressive. By knockouts as well. Yeah. Um, uh, he, he beat Thiago Santos by knockout as well so yeah. look since that Paul Craig loss he's looked on fire and he's on three straight now he has done he, and you know what he didn't show he hasn't shown any sort of like frigidity frigidity no. or, he's not frigid at all with throwing his hands after the, what you know, Paul Craig had done mm. to his hands mm. on the ground but yeah he's confident still going out there banging knocking people out yeah talking to Paul and Craig I was hoping that he was going to make a surge but unfortunately he fell short against Uzdemir, which yeah. is quite unfortunate. He did start off the year very well, of course. You know, he beat Nikita Krylov at UFC London, which was a great performance. That was really um, good. But look, now he's down at number 10. Yeah. I feel like he might have been figured out a little bit now. You know, goes mm. to the world too often with his strategies and people know exactly what he's going to try and do. And uh, and, and very aware of it, uh, yeah. which is why uh, he, he had that loss against Uzdemir, who just really had to be patient. Yeah, I think he needs to mix things up a bit more better. Mm. But who did we pick though? I actually can't remember. Yeah, of course. Yuri Braska across of the board. Yes. Now, of course, that still stands. However, it is slated that a rematch between Glover and Yuri is going to take uh, take place towards the end of the year. Yeah, that could so be it's going to be squeaky bum time for that fight. Yeah, um, yeah 282, 282 in December as well, down to the wire. It's going to be intriguing to see if that fight obviously still stays in fruition. Touch wood, it still does. Because um, I wanted to see lot, uh, the rematch. I think both... I mean, it went down to the wire. Glover was winning that fight until the last round. That's so true. 
So, um, and uh, yeah, Yuri got the finish on him, but yeah. Yuri wasn't impressed with his performance. And he said to the UFC, look, I want to run this back. Mm. Which yeah. is, says a lot about him as a champion. That's incredible. And, and do you know, he's not actually been around that often himself, has he? No. He's actually been in the, what, three fights? And now he's sitting, in the, yeah. sitting yeah, on the podium? Fights, yeah. Yeah, look, the, guys, the guy could could have done better and more. I mean, Ash was screaming at TV, wasn't he? Yeah. No knees. No, no knees. knees. But, you know, the guy, he, he, he ended up subbing Glover, yeah. who was actually forcing a lot of the takedowns and working mostly on the ground. Now, I know, he, I, know I picked Yuri in this, but... Towards the fight, I did kind of want Glover to win in a way. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my heart opened up to him a little bit more, especially when you see the embedded series and see you see how nice he is as a person. You, yeah. you can't help but kind of go um, go for it. And Glover as I was guy. looking into more of the fight, doing tape, mm. I did kind of think, well, you know, I felt that Glover was had enough to to, to beat Yuri. Yeah. But uh, no, look, a pick's a pick, and we could very well be there. Yeah. Let's move on to the last division, probably the most interesting one. Yeah. Uh, this one. It was actually the, the guns. first fight of the year and this is yes. how we're going to be ending the, uh, exactly. the the car tonight as well so that's quite poetic but we had looked at the whole lineup with Cyril Gunn was the interim uh, belt title yes, holder at the was. beginning of the year due to fight of course none other than Francis and Garner himself um, and then you got Stipe uh, tied to Vassal and that's something to mention tied to Vassal that the jump. was impressive beating Derek Lewis wow absolutely and, look, and that did know. things that shouldn't usually happen in the rankings no chucked him right down from 11 to 3 that's got to be the probably the biggest jump we've seen across the divisions to date yeah at this yeah yeah it? yeah it was kind of the first real big jump yeah it really got uh, a lot of people scratching year. their heads um yeah, and of course, other than that, I mean, the downfall of Derek Lewis is really sad that is to sad. see, of course. Going down the, the seven, rise of right. uh, Tom Aspinall, though, uh, it was a big one. He could yeah. have got even further if he didn't blow his knee out against Curtis Blades. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. a no starter, but I, I believe they will look to run that one back, will they? I don't know. Me, but I don't know. No, not yet. I the think fight that's never that's really be out for a happened. While. Yeah, it's going to take some recovery um, time there. Yeah, you've got Alexander Romanov, who obviously got entered into the rankings, but mm -hmm. he's fell, fallen short from mm -hmm. making a progressive move because he lost the march into Bora this past weekend. Um, yeah, I think uh, you've got Volkov, who's made some slips as well. Glad to see. Um, but yeah, I think we should get into who we who do we pick? Let's have a look. No, I was so confident in this one. Yeah. So this was funny. So confident. Because we laughed at Ash, didn't we? We did. We were <laughs> like, what are you doing? He's gonna give up his contract, he's gonna go and fight Tyson. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it, this guy's this guy's gonna be making money elsewhere. He's not even gonna be in the UFC for exactly. the end of the year. And we were so and we confident. thought that Cyril Gam was gonna win, take yeah. the belt back. But look, which is rightly so, in a way, it did look um, plausible mm. going through with that mindset. Like we said, if Cyril Gunn does win to Francis, Francis is going to give the belt up anyways, and then surely Cyril Gunn's going to be fighting for the belt again. Yeah, but it's just not happened. What is happening with his contract negotiations? I don't it's, know. It's being dragged out it so is. long. It's from the first fight of the year or yeah. pay per view of the year, and we're now in month eight, and we have still haven't heard anything about what's going to happen next with. The, the, the belt who's fighting on that belt but could it have been a different story if Nganu didn't blow his knee out because we didn't know this at the, this point or making these picks no, did we yeah, no 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 so no. if Nganu came out of that fight healthy then who knows what fight could have happened we could mm. have seen the John Jones fight he was working already. with an injury before the fight yeah we're still waiting for John Jones to make an appearance against Stipe. We thought we'd this it, it would happen this year. Mm. Um, whether or not it still would, uh, the, the rumors have been died down a little bit. The only possibility of it happening, and yeah, okay, then maybe it has been some inklings, but it's died down. Yeah. Um, was going to be the 282 card in December at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. So imagine having that. You'd have John Jones versus Stipe. And Yuri versus Glover all on the same card to Look, finish out that the would year. Just, that Ooh. would just be the biggest. That would be the biggest. But still... It, Merry it, Christmas, it, everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if anything, it will be an interim title belt. You know? Um, mm. Yeah, I think it's Ash about, is probably... Yeah, about the time they, they bring in another interim on that one. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, look, yeah, yeah, well done, Ash, on that one, because yeah. uh, we laughed at you, and I just want to say I'm sorry for laughing at you. Yeah, so far, so good, so far, so good, well played. So far, so All good. All right, I think that, that concludes right. it. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, smash a like on the video, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well. Yes. And, uh, you know, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below as well. 
you know, uh, let us know who you predicted coming into the year and, you know, who you think is going to be champion um, throughout the December and obviously into next year. 100%. Now, of course, we're not here this week with a full watch along, as you've noticed, because the UFC just hasn't given us one. Nope. But we'll be back next time. So do come and tune in next Saturday where we'll be back here to be do what we do best. UFC Paris, baby. Go on, rest the two of us. There we go. That's the card. It's going to be a nice early one for us and we're going to be getting the beers out so hopefully you can join us with it. If you're going to be there, smash a like. If you're not going to be there, also smash a like. Either way. You know it. Smash the like button. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Ciao, ciao.